Blockchain is one of the best industries for developers to specialize in in 2023. It's one of the highest paying fields in tech and the entire industry is positioned for massive growth in the coming years. But if you want to capitalize on this major opportunity, then you need to understand the tools and technologies that are in demand inside the industry right now. And in this video, I want to give you a massive list of 50 plus tools that you need to become a real world blockchain master today in 2023. I'm going to talk about all this as a blockchain developer myself who works with this technology on a daily basis, who has used most of the tools on this list. So if you're near around here, hey, I'm Gregory and on this channel. I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. And if you want to become a blockchain master, step-by-step -step start to finish, break into the blockchain industry, you know, increase your salary past 100K, then I can try to do that over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, so let's start off with programming languages first. So the number one programming language for blockchain development in 2023 is the Solidity programming language. Okay. So Solidity is an object-oriented high-level language for creating smart contracts. It's created originally for the Ethereum blockchain. So if you can program for Solidity, you can program for Ethereum. But the nice thing about Solidity is there are so many other EVM-compatible blockchains, which means if you can create applications in Solidity, then you can create them for those blockchains, things like Polygon, Binance Smart Chain, etc., etc. So Solidity is a Turing complete programming language, which basically means that it has all the features of most uh, full-fledged programming languages that you can write any arbitrary program in. Uh, and, you know, it is the building block of blockchain-based applications. And so if you learn this, you will be a blockchain developer. Now, let's talk about other programming languages, because, you know, if you're just going to learn one programming language, Solidity is definitely the one to know. But you're probably going to have to learn at least one other programming language in order to become a proficient blockchain developer. And I'll talk about why. Um, you know, in addition to writing smart contracts, you're also going to need to do things like test your smart contracts, write scripts for deployment, write scripts for interacting with them, any type of automation you might do, and then also probably create front-end applications as well. And that brings us to our secondary programming language of JavaScript, okay? Now, this is my number one recommendation on the second programming language to learn because you can do things like create smart contracts, um, you know, in terms of the, the, the development life cycle, with those frameworks, uh, writing tests, you know, putting them on a blockchain, doing a type of automation. But you also get this added benefit of creating user interfaces or websites that talk to the smart contracts. So you get a lot of uh, mileage out of a second programming language, which means you only have to learn two. Now, another great complementary programming language is going to be Python, okay? Um, lots, of, lots of blockchain developers who like Python, especially if they're kind of staying on the back-end side of things. Okay, writing scripts for smart contracts, writing, uh, you know, maybe processes that run on a virtual machine somewhere that interact with them, deploying with the smart contracts, writing bots, okay. Uh, Python's a great programming language. If you already know it, you're going to have a huge leg up in blockchain development. But if you're just a beginner, you're not sure what to start with, uh, JavaScript, in my opinion, is going to be some more flexibility. So the last programming language to know, or at least be familiar with, have it on your radar, is Rust, Okay. So Rust is a programming language that's, you know, gained quite a bit of popularity from different blockchain uh, development reasons, right? But one of the number one reasons is for the Solana ecosystem. Uh, Solana heavily relies upon Rust. Um, now, the downside to Rust is that it's a lot harder for beginners to learn in general. It's a much more low-level programming language as opposed to Solidity, which is a much more high-level programming language. Um, you know, for people who are just starting from scratch, who've never coded before, I generally don't recommend Rust. You're probably going to get a little frustrated uh, as you're going through your development process. I would recommend starting with Solidity. All right, so now let's talk about different frameworks for blockchain development and also IDEs. So let's start off with what is a framework? Well, a framework is really just something that you install on your computer that helps create applications, okay? So uh, I'll just pull up an example and tell you what it is, and that way you can see what a framework is. So Hardhat is an example of a smart contract development framework. So what does it do? Well, it lets you write smart contracts on your local machine, uh, do things like spin up a test blockchain, do things like organize your files all in the same folder, or you can you know, write tests inside of those. You can spin up that test blockchain. You can deploy the smart contracts from uh, that hard hat project. You can write scripts that run against those smart contracts. You can keep track of the ABIs, the deployed addresses, connect them to a website. All of that uh, from one place without having to write all this functionality yourself. You can do things from your terminal, like run commands, like you know, create a new file, uh, deploy the smart contract, run a script. This would all be very hard to do 
if you didn't have any tools on your computer to do them. And that's exactly what Hard Hat allows you to do. It's the Ethereum development environment for professionals. So um, Hard Hat uh, lets you write smart contracts in Solidity. You can debug them. You can you know uh, write tests for them. You can bring your own tools. It supports Ethers JS out of the box. You can configure it to work with Web three JS. Okay, um, it's it's my preferred smart contract development framework. Okay, at the time of recording this video, it's the most popular one, and that's probably one of the biggest reasons why I like to stay up to date when relevant on you know what's happening in the space and like to teach you all uh, what the most in demand frameworks are now. There's another one called Truffle, which is a very good uh, tool. I was first a Truffle user when I became a blockchain developer. I switched primarily to doing hard hat most because that's what uh, the most popular thing is. And again, I like to stay relevant and teach you all what's most popular. However, Truffle is a fine tool uh, for you know creating Ethereum smart contracts. You do the same types of things. You can write uh, tests for the smart contracts, deploy them to a blockchain, write scripts uh, in JavaScript. All right and uh, write those smart contracts in Solidity. Now, let's talk about another one, which is Brownie. All right, so Brownie is another smart contract development framework. Uh, how is it different from Truffle and Hardhat? Well, in Truffle and Hardhat, these are both like very similar tools. And one of the main reasons is because, it, well, for number one, they do basically the same thing. But number two is that the programming language that you're using in addition to Solidity is JavaScript. So what I mean by that is, you're creating smart contracts in Solidity, but when you're writing tests, you write those tests in JavaScript. Or if you write, you know, a deployment script, you write that script in JavaScript. Now, Brownie is different because, you know, you're writing the contracts in Solidity, but if you're writing tests, you're probably writing them in Python, right? If you're writing them, if you're writing those deployment scripts, you're writing them in Python. So if you're a Python developer, you need a framework to create smart contracts, then uh, Brownie is probably your number one solution. Now, let's talk about some other frameworks. Dapp Tools is another great um, you know, tool, if you like command line tools and you like doing uh, smart contract development, if you're like really good at, uh, you know, CLI tools, you know, bash scripting, all that type of stuff, then definitely check out DAP tools. Uh, Foundry is another one. So this is a Rust based smart contract development framework. So it's very similar to like what Hardhat and uh, Truffle and Brownie do does. But just like, you know, uh, the difference in Brownie is that it does all the secondary functions uh, in Python. Foundry does all the secondary functions in Rust. Okay, so it's basically uh, Solidity plus Rust, right? So this is Solidity plus JavaScript, Solidity plus JavaScript, Solidity plus uh, Python. This is Solidity plus uh, Rust. Okay, so Forge is part of this. It's the Ethereum testing framework like Truffle, Hardhat, and Dapp tools. CAST is a Swiss Army knife for interacting with EVM smart contracts, any transactions getting on chain data. And then Anvil is the local Ethereum node akin to Ganache uh, or the Hard Hat network. Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about here is um, Remix. So I said this is frameworks and IDEs in this section. So an IDE is basically like a full fledged uh, development environment with a text editor with command line tools uh, or a console, I should say. Uh, all in one place. So basically, this lets you create smart contracts all in your browser. All right. You can create new contracts inside here. All right. Just like this uh, one you see on my screen. All right. You don't have to install anything on your computer. You can compile it straight in your browser. Uh, you can deploy it to a test blockchain in browser. You can see this uh, fake, you know, blockchain running right here with accounts inside of it, all with, you know, 100 Ether in them. I can go ahead and deploy this right now and start interacting with the functions right here. I can hand test things. I can also connect my MetaMask and deploy it live to a test network and also live to the Ethereum mainnet. So theoretically, like you could create an entire blockchain program straight inside your web browser with only one programming language without having to install anything in your computer with Remix. Now, it's great for testing things out. I've used even some of professional projects, but if you want to you know, get into in-depth uh, development, especially if you're collaborating with other developers, you're probably going to want to get into some sort of framework where you can use version control and uh, push to GitHub and things like that. And, you know, these other ones that I've mentioned here are fine options for that. All right, so now let's talk about front-end tools. So what do I mean by front-end? Well, in, you know, pretty much all web development, you have front-end and back-end, okay, where front-end is the thing that the user sees, and then the back-end is the thing the user doesn't see that gives, you know, some sort of behavior uh, to your application, right? And so in traditional full-stack web development, the back-end might be on a server, right? 
um, or something like that. But in you know, blockchain, the back end might be the blockchain itself and the smart contracts. Now, the front end is going to be something that the user sees, like a website that talks to the smart contracts. And we're going to talk about libraries that relate to that and different tools. So the first one is Ethers.js. So really, what is Ethers.js? Well, you know, most web applications out of the box are not going to talk to the blockchain directly. You actually have to connect to it a blockchain node. And that's what Ethers.js lets you do. So if you're writing a JavaScript application on the front end, Ethers is going to be a library that lets you connect that JavaScript application to the blockchain. You just give it a connection. You can create JavaScript versions of your smart contracts that you can call their functions. Uh, you can fetch any information you want to from the blockchain and also sign transactions with a wallet with a private key, like with a MetaMask, and then, you know, basically update the chain that way. Ethos is a great tool for doing this. It's my number one uh, library for doing this. It's the most popular one among JavaScript developers, and that's why I use it. Now, Web3.js is another option that basically does the exact same thing. Okay, so um, it, has, it has a lo little bit less popularity now in 2023 than Ethers.js does. Okay, I started off on Web3.js and changed uh, to Ethers.js. Again, mostly out of the popularity. I just like to be using tools that uh, the majority is using. Uh, that's not always the best idea in, in the real world for many things, but in software development, it has its benefits, like being able to uh, you know, talk to other people about issues, finding supported uh, you know, things that are compatible with the tools that you're using. Okay. And then I also just like to teach other people what's the most popular thing with the most demand behind it. And that's why I primarily use Ethers. But Web3.js is a fine library. Uh, if you already know it, you're going to get plenty of mileage out of this uh, for creating blockchain-based applications. So another one is going to be Web3Pi. So basically, this is the same thing. If you have a Python application and you want to um, you know, talk to the blockchain, then that's what Web3Pi does. If you're a Python developer, you need to connect your app to the blockchain, you can use Web3Pi. Now, I know this is the front-end section, and that's not necessarily what you're going to be doing with Python. And there's a little bit of a misfit anyway, because you can still use Ethers.js and Web3.js in back-end applications that run JavaScript or scripts that don't even have a front-end, but I, you need a place to put this stuff, and that's why I stuck it here. Now, let's talk about an actual framework for creating uh, user interfaces or websites or mobile apps or whatever. Okay, so React is my number one choice here. It's definitely the most popular uh, front-end framework in the blockchain world, especially anything related to Ethereum. Um, you know, it's, it's very compatible with things like uh, Ethers.js, Web3.js, although it does not use those out of the box. Now, one thing I'll say about React is that um, it is not, there's nothing to do with blockchain specifically, okay? You can build regular uh, web applications, uh, web 2.0 applications with React. There's nothing web 3.0 about it specifically, but it's the most popular choice um, for blockchain development in terms of front end. So basically, React just lets you organize your code into reusable components. It's got things like state management. You can mix JavaScript and HTML on the same files. Um, I really like it quite a bit. Now, I want to mention one other tool while we're here, which is uh, Scaffold ETH, okay? So Scaffold ETH is a, is a cool tool. It's going to let you uh, sort of bootstrap Web 3.0 applications and pull in a bunch of different reusable components uh, like wallet connectors, forms, uh, you know, buttons and, and, and you know, transaction confirmation. Like a lot of the common UI elements that you would see in a blockchain application, you can just pull in quickly with Scaffold uh, ETH for creating prototypes and things like that. So that's definitely another one to check out. All right, so now let's talk about development blockchains or test blockchains. So what do I mean by this? Well, anytime that you are uh, creating smart contracts, you need to run a blockchain on your computer so that you can develop things quickly. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, think about it. If you need to put a smart contract on a real blockchain, it's going to cost you money. All right. And that blockchain is also very slow to use. It probably has a very uh, you know low number of transactions per second. And if you were to make changes to your, and also smart contracts are immutable, the code can't change. So anytime you make a code change, you'd have to redeploy that thing, pay a gas cost, and then wait a really long time to watch your changes uh, take place. It would, it would be basically just cost prohibitive in terms of you know finding you know money and also time to, to create a to create an, a blockchain application. So the alternative to that is not using a test network where it's free. It's still going to be slow and and cumbersome. This lets you do everything on your computer because they're really fast. Like you can, you can do like a bazillion transactions in a second. Not really, but compared to a regular blockchain, it's totally free. You don't have to pay any cryptocurrency. You can just get a bunch of accounts for free. And that's exactly what block, you know, Ganache does. So 
I'm going to give you a couple of different examples, but Ganache is basically a blockchain that you can just install uh, with a one-click installer like this, like a traditional app. It's got a user interface, so you can launch an actual app on your computer. You can see that it spins up all these different accounts for you for free. It's got these different, uh, you know, f amount of cryptocurrency in it, like 100 fake Ether. You can see the private keys. You can see all that stuff, like your mnemonic. And then you can start, uh, you know, developing smart contracts, deploying them really fast, making code changes, all that type of stuff. It's like if you were in a Web 2.0 world and you had a development server, that's basically what this is. It's a server that runs a fake blockchain. Now, there's another uh, version of this, which is Ganache, Ganache CLI, okay, which is the command line version. Now, Ganache CLI has technically been deprecated. It's now just Ganache, okay, so you can see that uh, URL, but this is the CLI version, which basically means you can just run it from your command line like this, you have to npm install uh, ganache dash dash global, and then you can run this ganache uh, command line tool and it'll start a blockchain in your terminal like this. So it gave you those accounts with fake ether, uh, just like you can see uh, with the app. Now, a cool feature of ganache CLI is it lets you fork the blockchain. So what do I mean by that? Well, basically you can point your ganache uh, CLI instance to the Ethereum mainnet and like freeze it and then you can unlock accounts on it and you can pretend to be them. You can use existing applications like Uniswap uh, with the current state of the blockchain and write your own uh, you know, smart contracts that interact with that. It's a pretty big uh, deal if you're trying to create real world blockchain apps that have uh, external real world blockchain dependencies. Okay, So that's a cool benefit of Ganache CLI. Now, um, let's talk about another one which is the um, hard hat node so ganache uh, gui and ganache cli are also um you know they're test blockchains that work you know basically the same under the hood but there's a you know a, a graphical user interface version and a command line tool interface version but they both are a part of the truffle uh suite of tools so i mean from our previous section truffle is a smart contract development framework ganache is associated blockchain in that suite of tools now hard hat uh, is another smart contract development framework we talked about. It's got its own blockchain. It's just called the hard hat node. Okay, so you can just start it with, you know, uh, hard hat node command. It'll it'll give you, you know, t I think 20 accounts and with like 10,000 fake ether. Uh, the nice thing about the hard hat node is it runs the same accounts every time. Um, you know, anytime you deploy a smart contract, it gives you the same addresses every time. Uh, stuff like that. Now, it also has a forking feature, so you can fork the mainnet, just like we talked about with the Ganache uh, CLI uh, implementation as well. Okay. You can actually do that in your test as well. It's cool. Now, let's talk about one more before we wrap up this section, which is uh, Anvil. Okay. So, I, you know, I, I talked about this a little bit in the uh, Foundry section. So, again, Foundry is a smart contract development framework uh, where you're doing things in Rust. And Anvil is the test blockchain in that ecosystem. If you look at it, it looks a lot like, uh, you know, the hard hat node, um, but it is Anvil. Okay, its its implementation is with Rust. All right, so let's talk about blockchain nodes. So first of all, what is a blockchain node? Well, if you're going to connect any application to a blockchain, uh, you have to access an individual node. Okay, again, a blockchain is a peer-to-peer -peer network of nodes that all talk to one another. You need to access one of those nodes to write a blockchain app to make a transaction to retrieve any information. So uh, it's really hard to run your own node and typically cost prohibitive for most people. And so you can use somebody else's node. And that's exactly what Infura is. Infura is an Ethereum node as a service or any EVM compatible chain or not maybe any, but many, many, many different blockchains. Okay. Um, they've grown quite a bit over the years. All right. And that's a big benefit. I think it also has like IPFS support and things like that. If you also want those capabilities. Now, Alchemy is a very similar um, platform. It does things beyond just that, but um, a primary use case for Alchemy is running uh, blockchain nodes as well, and also monitoring your blockchain applications. Uh, they support many different chains, like many of the EVM compatible chains, also Solana. Okay, so Alchemy is another one to check out. The benefit, again, of these platforms is you can get access to a blockchain node without having to run one yourself, either for free or very, very cheap. Now, Quick Node is another one. So quick node lets you spin up an Ethereum node. You can get access to a dedicated node. You can get access to archive nodes on many different blockchains. Definitely another one to check out. And then finally, let's talk about running your own node. Okay, so again, uh, most people do not want to do this, but if you do want to go down the road of running your own blockchain node, particularly for Ethereum, I highly recommend checking into Geth or the Go implementation of Ethereum. I'll put a link to that down in the description below. You can browse the documentation, you know, browse the GitHub, and you will learn uh, more about that. All right, so now it's about libraries and SDKs. 
So the first library that I want to talk about is Open Zeppelin. So what does it do? Why should you care about it? Well, Open Zeppelin is a library for creating smart contracts, okay? So if you think about it, there's a lot of different smart contracts out there. Well, there's two, two main reasons. One is there's a lot of different smart contracts out there that are kind of solved problems uh, for the simple use cases. Things like tokens. Like if you want to launch your own ERC-20 token, it's great if you're a beginner to learn how to code one of those out from scratch because you can learn the programming languages and a real-world use case. But once you know how to do that, like you're probably going to get more mileage out of just taking an ERC-20 token off the shelf. And that's exactly what Open Zeppelin allows you to do. You can do things like create tokens, NFTs, DAOs, um, you know, all from the, um, you know, library by just importing them into your in Solidity files and then maybe extending them to add some additional behavior. Okay. So um, you can see how to get started with the docs right here. This is for version four. You can see you can create an NFT really easily. You can create a token really easily. You can create a DAO, uh, whatever it is. You've got all these different things like cross-chain utilities, uh, et cetera, et cetera, all inside this. Now, the other big benefit is these are community audited. So basically, you know, you really need to audit smart contracts before you put them on the blockchain. And if you want to create a simple token that doesn't you know, really need auditing, I mean, it still does, but doesn't need much auditing, then, you know, that's a really great option. So... Let's look at a couple other ones. So I'm talking about Morales here. Um, you know, Morales is a tool. There's a lot of different things. I could have put it in the previous section in terms of like nodes, but it's, I'm going to put it in, in the SDK uh, category because you can do a lot of things out of the box. Um, it does things like analytics. It does things like API integrations. It does things like, you know, access to nodes. But they do have uh, quite a bit of, uh, you know, SDKs where you can just install it, put it in your project, and then you use those uh, nice interfaces that developers like uh, right inside your project. You get a lot of functionality for free. And that's what I'm including in this section. Now, another one is Third Web. So Third Web is a library or SDK that's going to let you do things like launch NFTs really quickly. Um, you know, launch different ready-made smart contracts. It's got a contract kit. It's got some UI tools. Uh, it's got a great starter kit. Okay, so you can see how to uh, do that in many different programming languages, just in JavaScript, React, Python, Go, Unity. Okay, so Third Web's one to check out. Now, let's talk about some other SDKs for specific blockchain-based applications. I'm going to put two in here uh, because these are very, very popular applications on the blockchain. So number one is Uniswap. So um, it's a really great thing to understand how Uniswap works from a developer's perspective and what no better way than to use the Uniswap SDK to interact with the protocol. So you can use this in like JavaScript, for example. You can uh, basically npm install the uh, Uniswap SDK and then do things like swap tokens in a script all from your computer, okay? This is great for if you're doing any type of DeFi scripting or trading bots, et cetera, et cetera, or just to get your hands dirty and see how the Uniswap protocol works because it is the most popular application in the blockchain landscape. It's great to know how it works under the hood. Now, another one is compound finance, okay? Well, another reason for Uniswap, sorry, is because it's also one of the most highly forked protocols. And so if you understand how to work with Uniswap version 2 specifically, you're going to learn how to work with many other DEXs out there. Now, I'm talking about Compound because this is another huge um, you know, player in this space because it's a savings and lending app, which is one of the most popular you know, use cases for uh, DeFi or decentralized finance. And Compound's a leader in that space, and they have a really great SDK for interacting with their uh, you know, dApps, okay? So Compound is also a widely forked protocol as well, which is why I say if you use the SDK for interacting with Compound, it's going to make a sense of a lot of different other different uh, blockchain-based applications on there that might borrow concepts or you know lift concepts entirely from the Compound protocol. And you can use their SDK to uh, learn that as well. All right, so now let's talk about faucets. So what are these? Well, basically, whenever you start creating smart contracts, you're probably going to go through multiple different phases in the development process, where step one, you're you know doing them on your computer. Um, you know, where you're doing it on a test blockchain with like the hard hat node or ganache. All right. And then once you've done that, you kind of want to test your smart contracts on a uh, test network. Okay. Where you put them out on a network where the cryptocurrency isn't worth anything and you're not going to get into trouble if you like put a token on the test network or something like that. And also it's a way that your project just stays up forever and you can share it with friends or use it for your portfolio or potential employers, et cetera, et cetera, before it goes to the main net. All right. That's what a test network does. Now, how do you get cryptocurrency to pay for transaction fees on a test network so they can deploy the contracts, you know, send funds around, stuff like that? That's exactly what a faucet is for. So a faucet is a place where you can just request free cryptocurrency on a test network like Gorly, for example. So I put the Gorly faucet up here. This is from Alchemy. All right, so Alchemy is one of the people who, who m maintains faucets. That's why I put this resource here. 
You can do Gourley or Mumbai. All right, you can basically put your wallet in here, say send me ETH, it's going to be rate limited, you need to sign in, and you can request up to 0.2 Gourley ETH per day. All right, and then a certain amount of Mumbai ETH per day. So it's like it's temporarily available, it's okay. Now the other big faucet we're talking about is the Chainlink faucet, which supports multiple networks as well. Okay, you can see a list of all of them. It won't let me currently change the network right here for some reason, but it supports many things besides just Gourley. Uh, definitely check out the Chainlink faucet as an additional resource uh, to request faucet funds for your blockchain development. Uh, speaking of test nets, let me just give you a few concrete examples. I kind of mentioned this before. I explained the test network in the faucet section. I probably should have put this section first, but oh well, here we are. Again, the importance of a test network is a place where you can test your smart contracts out. You can share them with your friends. You can uh, share them with potential employers. Okay. Uh, so, Gorley is my number one test network for Ethereum, okay? So if your end destination is the Ethereum mainnet, then I would highly recommend testing your uh, stuff out on Gourley. Now, uh, another test network that's really popular is going to be the uh, Mumbai test nut. And that's if you're basically going to end up on the Polygon uh, mainnet as your final destination. Now, if you don't really care, um, you know, Gourley and Mumbai are going to work very similar to one another. Uh, let's say you ran out of Ether in one wallet and you only had, you know, test, you know, Ether or, or test Matic, right? You only had test gas tokens in one wallet. You could probably get away with using either one of these test networks as great starting points. All right, so let's talk about oracles. Okay, so what is an oracle? So if you understand how smart contracts work on a blockchain, you know that blockchains are basically closed systems. Blockchains really only know about, um, you know, the amount of cryptocurrency in everybody's wallet, uh, what smart contracts are on the network, uh, what the state of those smart contracts are, how to call the functions, all that type of stuff. It doesn't really know uh, information outside the blockchain. It doesn't know what the current weather is in California. It doesn't know what the price of Bitcoin is. It doesn't know what the current price of you know Amazon stock is. That's all external real world data. Now, what if you wanted to supply that information to a smart contract in the blockchain? Well, that's what you use an oracle for. An oracle is an external source of truth that puts outside information onto a smart contract in a blockchain. So without going too in-depth on how that works, um, you know, there are different solutions out there for oracles, but one of the uh, leaders by far in the space is the decentralized oracle network chain link. Okay, that's exactly what it does. Uh, you can pull information from the real world and put it in your smart contracts. And it's pretty easy to get started uh, with Chainlink just by in integrating their software developer kits into your project. You can look at the data uh, feeds here. Uh, price feeds is probably the easiest way to get started, uh, you know, pulling in, uh, let's say, the price of Bitcoin or Ether, for example, from the real world into your smart contracts. So you can use Chainlink uh, inside your smart contracts. You just have to pay a small fee in order to request information and get put back into your contract. It's also got some JavaScript tools if you want to add this to your front ends as well, okay, to get certain information. But the main uh, use case for this is to use it on the back end inside your smart contract. And that's how you get started doing that. All right, so now let's talk about hosting, okay? So hosting is kind of a strange topic when you're talking about blockchain development because the whole idea of Web 3.0 is to move away from web servers, right, to move towards using blockchains. Now, uh, you know, I believe in a future of a hybridized world where we use the blockchain for the things it's supposed to do, right? And then we'll have web servers and other things like that to do what they're supposed to do, right? So, um, but let's talk about hosting needs and the most common use cases. So one is basically a way to store files, okay, when you, you have to use those with blockchains. So, you know, it's cost prohibitive to put most files on a blockchain. Uh, think, for example, like an NFT image. You don't want to put that thing on a blockchain. It's probably not even going to work. So uh, what do you do? Well, you put it on something like IPFS, which is a decentralized file storage protocol that just basically stores images forever redundantly across multiple computers that all talk to one another. Kind of works like a blockchain, but it's not a blockchain. So, you know, just like a blockchain, you can run your own node for IPFS, but most people are not going to do that. OK, and you can use something like Pinata to access IPFS and put your media in the cloud uh, for Web3. Basically, it lets you upload files to IPFS, read from them, and then you can put those NFT images inside your smart contracts or any files that you want to that need that you need for blockchain development. Pinata is a great uh, resource for doing that. Now, let's talk about another big use case is front end applications. So most blockchain apps uh, you know, have front ends that users can see. So they can interact with the smart contracts, okay? And, you know, you're going to build a website or user interface, probably something like React, JS, and put it out there so they can do that. Now, 
you need to host that somewhere. So Fleek is a great option for doing that, for especially for beginners who are just trying to get started fast, maybe for your portfolio uh, or something like that. Because um, you can basically just connect to your GitHub account and then automatically deploy it, both one, live to the web with a free URL, or number two, directly to the interplanetary file system or IPFS to make your app completely decentralized without relying on any uh, you know, servers so that it can't be censored or taken down. Okay, so Fleek's definitely a great option for that. All right, now let's talk about monitoring tools. So what do I mean by this? Well, basically, whenever you're uh, debugging things in the wild, uh, you need some extra tools to help you do that. So let's say you put a smart contract out there and you want to see information about, you know, a transaction failure that you can't see on a block explorer like Etherscan, you might want a tool that will show you more in-depth insights on that. You also might want something that alerts you anytime you're getting failed transactions on your smart contract or something like that so that you could potentially address some type of bug or mitigate a fix, maybe a hack even. Uh, okay, so let's talk about some tools to do that. So Bloxy is one. So basically, you can just put in a transaction uh, hash, okay, and uh, you can search that and it will give you, you know, information about that transaction, notably what the steps are inside of it. You can see the low level information. Sometimes it'll give you good, uh, you know, uh, visuals on what's happening there or some more readout. Um, so another one is Tenderly. Okay. So basically Tenderly does a lot of different things, but you know, the main uh, thing that they started with essentially and they've gotten popular for is those monitoring tools. You can do things like, you know, get alerts about things in your smart contracts uh, it's got some simulators, got a gas profiler, debugger, but it's great for monitoring pr production projects. Uh, Alchemy also, uh, if you use their development platform, you can see lots of information about your node as well and some of those types of things. But uh, these are some good resources to get started with for monitoring. All right, so now let's talk about some tools for auditing your smart contracts. So auditing is really a critical step. Basically, this is checking your smart contracts for any vulnerabilities that allow them to be hacked. All right. So let's talk about a couple tools for this. The first one is Slither. So Slither is a static analysis tool that can potentially help you find problems with your code before it really goes through uh, maybe the next phase or even you know some more in-depth line-by-line human auditing. This is basically a way to just programmatically find uh, you know different things, almost like a lint checker. It's not a perfect analogy, but like something that just like finds you know uh, potential issues in your Solidity code before it goes through more in-depth analysis. So the next step on that would be like a fuzzing campaign, okay? And that's what you could use uh, Echidna for, okay? So Echidna is a weird creature that eats bugs and is highly electrosensitive. If you want to know what that name came from, okay? So basically, it's designed for uh, fuzzing property test, uh, sorry, property-based testing with Ethereum smart contracts uh, using Haskell, okay? So basically, you know, you can use Slither first and then kind of move on to something uh, like fuzz checking with Echidna. So and these are some of the two most popular tools for, uh, you know, speeding up the smart contract development, excuse me, the smart contract auditing workflow, uh, you know, before it goes beyond that into more line by line, maybe human testing. All right, so now let's talk about data. All right, so you there are many cases where you want to pull information in from the blockchain and, uh, you know, query it. But blockchains are notoriously hard to query historical data, especially over large data sets. So what do I mean by that? Well, basically, what if you wanted to talk to Uniswap and say like, okay, show me all the swaps that happened from this date to that date uh, that involved these tokens with these users and the value was greater than, you know, $10,000 or something like that. Uh, it'd be really hard to do that quickly, but that's exactly what something like the graph does. So it's a GraphQL API, which you can connect to specific subgraphs, or different you know parts of the blockchain or specific applications to write the types of queries like I was talking about right here. So if you know GraphQL, um, then you, you can connect to each different application or subgraph that's supported uh, on the graph to get that type of information. Now, another tool for this is um, uh, BitQuery. So BitQuery is a very similar type of thing. It's a uh, GraphQL-based uh, API where you can, you know, make requests to get any data that you want to about DEXs, about, you know, transactions, about money flow, market analytics, decentralized finance, scientific research, et cetera, et cetera. With GraphQL, uh, BitQuery is a great uh, resource for doing that. Now, the final one I want to talk about is uh, Google BigQuery inside of Google Clouds, which is a SQL-based, uh, you know, data set. They have a publicly available Ethereum data set. If you want to query things on like Ethereum, the token transfers, uh, look for really specific trends and patterns that way, you can do that. 
Uh, you can also do things like Polygon. There's many other blockchains that support, but Google BigQuery is another SQL-based, uh, very large data set to check out. All right, so now let's talk about one of everybody's favorite topics, which is Flash Loans. So Flash Loans is the ability to, to borrow millions of dollars of cryptocurrency on the blockchain, uh, basically for free, okay? Uh, as long as you pay the money back in the same transaction, okay? And there's no risk that you can lose the money. You can do things like uh, arbitrage trading, different DeFi strategies like liquidations, leverage, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So let's talk about some different Flash Loan providers. So Aave is the most popular ones, okay? Uh, they were the first players in the Flash Loan space. The Aave protocol has developed many different, uh, sorry, deployed to many different blockchains like Ethereum and other EVM compatible chains. So if you learn how to do it with this, you can do it on many other chains as well. So here, I'll put a link to the Aave docs down the description below. Um, Aave has a fee associated with it that's a little bit higher than some of the others. Uh, so that's why one of the reasons I focus on something like DYDX, okay, is another uh, you know, flash loan provider with basically no fee. I mean, it's got a fee, but it's so small. It's like one way of the cryptocurrency you're borrowing. So DYDX is a decentralized uh, derivative exchange, okay, um, on the blockchain. And that's another one where you can do flash loans. Another one is Dodo. So Dodo is a multi-chain uh, flash loan provider. What I mean by that is they have their app on many different chains. So if you want to try a bunch of different blockchains, you can use Dodo. They also have a no fee way of doing flash loans. Okay, it's a little more cumbersome to implement, but if you need no fees and you need multi-chain support, Dodo's want to check out. And then uh, let's see here. Finally, also you can check out the flash swaps feature on the Uniswap uh, application itself. I'll put a link to that down in the description below. All right, so now let's talk about wallets. Okay, so what is a wallet? So a wallet is something that lets you hold cryptocurrency in it. All right, and you can pay for transactions. Okay, that's one way to think about a wallet. But you can also think about a wallet that turns your web browser into a blockchain browser, right? So MetaMask is the number one uh, wallet for doing that for Web 3.0 applications on desktop. Okay, I use it. You can see my little fox icon up here in the corner. Um, you can have the Google Chrome Web Store. You can and install it pretty quickly and transfer some funds into it. Uh, you can connect to many different blockchains, not just Ethereum, uh, you know, just by adding them custom inside the, uh, you know, application itself. So MetaMask also has a mobile version that you can check out, but MetaMask is by far the most popular wallet for Web 3.0. Now, Coinbase Wallet is another one. So this is created by Coinbase, of course, primarily uh, on mobile. Uh, but if they haven't started on desktop yet, I believe they are planning to do that. Um, maybe don't quote me on that, but Coinbase Wallet is definitely another one to check out. Okay, we also got Argent Wallet, which is a dedicated mobile Ethereum wallet. Uh, it works layer twos. You can use blockchain-based applications right inside of the mobile wallet without having to go to an external website. That's pretty cool. They have a really nice onboarding workflow where you can just basically just get started fast. Uh, you know, transfer funds from a card. You don't have to use Exchange. Uh, all inside the app, and boom, you're ready to start using blockchain and DeFi things like that uh, straight inside of this mobile application. So Argent is definitely a cool one. And then finally, Phantom Wallet is uh, another popular uh, blockchain wallet that runs in your web browser and also mobile, okay? Um, it started mostly for the Solana ecosystem, okay? But, you know, they are uh, coming to Ethereum and Polygon, so they are also, you know, expanding to those multi-chain uh, fronts as well. So definitely uh, uh, Phantom is another wallet to check out and have on your radar. All right, so finally, let's talk about a bunch of laundry list of, like, websites that are utilities, uh, good tools to use, things that are going to help you in your blockchain development process. So one is the Ethereum unit converter. So you're going to find yourself converting from things like Ether to Way and GUI all the time. So what is, you know, uh, Way? Well, if I show you Ethereum has 18 zeros after the decimal place, like uh, the Way is, this, is like the penny for Ethereum, like US dollar has a uh, 100 cents or two zeros after the decimal place. Well, Ether has this many Way, which is 18 zeros after the decimal place. And in smart contracts, you don't store things in decimal places, so you use, you use numbers like this without decimals, and uh, you're going to be storing things in way a lot, and it's nice to have this handy calculator that helps you do that. Also, GUI is another thing that's commonly used for gas calculations, and you can easily convert to GUI from way to Ether, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, with this nice tool. Okay. So uh, another one is actually tracking the gas prices. And my favorite gas tracker is just the one on Etherscan itself. So if you go to Etherscan forward slash gas tracker, it'll show you the different gas prices, okay, based on priority and then how much gas each different application is using. It'll show you the top gas guzzlers right now. This is also a bit of a, a help when you're trying to find out what's, you know, being popular on the blockchain right now. This is a good uh, thing to look at. So next is, of course, Etherscan itself. Okay, Etherscan is a massive, massive, massive tool that, you know, the space would be basically lost without it, Okay. 
So, uh, you know, Etherscan essentially is just a block explorer. It lets you, you know, look at the latest blocks, look at each transaction, any historical transaction or block, see what's inside of it, uh, who the recipients were. You can look at any on-chain activity you want to in Etherscan. It almost puzzles me that this website is even free. So another one is DeFi Llama. All right. So this is a great application for look to see what's happening inside the DeFi world in terms of each different project. You get lots of analytics like the TVL, the transactions per day, uh, all that type of stuff. You can look at different things like, you know, different projects that you can rank them. You can see which chains they're deployed to. Uh, you can see different forks of different projects. Like if you want to see every single, you know, Uniswap fork out there, you can find it on there. There's just like countless things you can do with DeFi Llama. It's, it's a pretty uh, cool tool that you should have on your radar as well. So another one is l2beat.com. Okay, so this is uh, a very similar tool that tracks all the activity on the Ethereum Layer 2 ecosystem. So if you're not familiar with Layer 2s, it's the long-term strategy for scaling Ethereum on the second environment where it's kind of like a blockchain, but it depends upon Ethereum itself in order to function. Okay, so you can track all the activity on it. Uh, you can see things like uh, TVL. You can also look at activity, okay, to see the number of transactions per day and over time, especially compared to Ethereum. Look, look at different layer twos out there, see what their utilization is, and the, you know the trends that are constantly changing as this landscape evolves and grows. So the last one I want to talk about here is Ultrasound Money. If you're curious what's happening with Ether, the asset itself, and you want to see what's happening with the uh, issuance, like is ETH actually deflationary? Um, how much ETH is being burned on a daily basis, weekly basis, annual basis? Um, what's the current inflation rate or slash deflation rate? How is that going to change things over time? Then Ultrasound Money is definitely a very cool website for finding out all of that information. All right, so that's an overview of 50 plus tools and resources that you need to become a blockchain master in 2023. That's what's relevant right now in the industry today. So I hope you like this video. You know, as always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And if you want to become a blockchain developer, change your career, break into the industry, you know, increase your salary past 100K, I guess you had to do that over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. Again, you really don't have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp Diversity.